Hello there, welcome to the Karen Wine Hour. My name is Lona Kiema, the Food and Beverage Manager. This is the first of a series of the Wine Hour. In this series, we bring you wines from all over the world uh, that you can taste. And with us today, we have our wine expert, Caroline Mukami, who will take us through this journey. Karibu sana, Carol, and take it off. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Mukami. I am a Karenite and a very big lover of wine. I think everything about viticulture and wine and farming it is so exciting. And I'm very happy to share my passion with you. And I hope by the end of today, I'll get you to be as obsessed with wine and viticulture as I am. Um, so I studied wine in Australia. From second year, I really got into it. I did an intensive tasting on Australian wines and that really exposed me to a whole new world on content and material I didn't know existed. For example, when I first tasted like a Chenin versus a Chardonnay, I was in class like, it's the same white wine, right? But lo and behold, I just fell so in love with how a simple fruit, like a simple grape that can grow anywhere, can create such amazing product and has such a beautiful story behind it and the amount of work and passion that goes behind making a simple glass of wine. So today I'm very happy we start the Karen, wine, Karen Country Club Wine Hour with Australian wine because I'm very passionate about it. And we're going to begin with Jacobs Creek winemakers. We're going to look at the Reserve Chardonnay and the Double Barrel Shiraz. Um, so some background about Jacobs Creek, it's run by Pernod Ricard Winemakers, which is a French winemaking firm who are, in, are into um, wine and spirits, specifically like whiskey and gin. But that's for another day. Today we're going to look at the wine collection. Pernod Ricard is a very well-known brand. It's the second largest alcohol producer. Um, the first is Diageo. And their market spans across Asia, the US, uh, parts of Africa and Southeast Asia to to Australia. Uh, they took over Jacobs Creek, I like to think in like the late 1900s. And so what they've done and why they stand out to me as a winemaking company is that they're very innovative and they're very much into sustainability in the wine industry and how they can take wine from being a very sort of elite product and sort of break it down so that everyone can feel access to it and feel like they can enjoy it as much as old world and new world countries um, present it to them. So um, I think the best way to introduce anyone to wine from a country is to talk about that country. So let's get into Australian wine culture and Australian wine history. Fun fact, Jacobs Creek is the biggest producer of wine in Australia, so we're very fortunate to have it here. Um, they have an incredible history of making like top tier, amazing vintages, amazing like blends, amazing uh, different special things is what I'm going to say about Jacobs Creek. But if I was to, if I was to show you on a map where the Spaniards sit, it is just like a few, like maybe a four, four, six hour drive from Adelaide. Adelaide is not a very big city. I did not hear about it until I moved there. So I was in Melbourne. Adelaide is perhaps like driving Nairobi to Mombasa twice. It's not near. And it's also, well, when you see Australia, you see kangaroos, they just hang around that side of the world. It's pretty dry. It's far from the ocean. And that gives the Spaniard a Mediterranean -y sort of a Mediterranean climate, which means that it has very hot days and then has very cool evenings. Uh, the geography here at the Spaniard is the sand has clay and limestone. And when you get into the reserve, we can we'll really look into why limestone is a very incredible soil for winemaking. Jacob Creek collection is made by a French wine producer called Pena Ricard. Um, the wine, it's Pena Ricard, but then this is specifically Pena Ricard winemakers um, because the entire Pena Ricard collection is spirits and wine. So we're going to look at the wine section today. Pena Ricard is the second largest alcohol distributor in the world, succeeded only by Diageo. So this one specifically is the Jacobs Creek collection. And Jacobs Creek is a very old vineyard from Adelaide. And Adelaide, Adelaide. I'd say Adelaide, it's, it's up to you how you say it. And what makes them very special is that they have over 100 years experience in winemaking and they're always trying something new and innovative like, hey, let's use 
like for example, this is double barrel Shiraz, and we'll get into that because that's a secret, but what they did here is unlike what any other vineyards in the industry are up to, are doing, sorry. So I'm really looking forward to tasting this very honestly. So Jacob's Creek is in Adelaide, we've just been through that. They, their sand and the location gives their wines a very specific and Australian -y character. That might sound weird if you've not lived there, so let me try and pack what that sentence means. Australian wine is very like cool climate, very like natural, very new world style. The best way I could say it is Jacob's Creek, um, the selling point or like the, the reason that they're very good winery in my perspective is because they look at winemaking as fun. They don't, they aren't really stuck onto how the old world looks at wine, which is very like traditional, cultural, stick to what has been done. In the new world, like Australia, they're very much like, how can we incorporate this and that into winemaking? And how can we make it more fun and more sustainable for everyone involved? Now that we have heaps of detail on where this wine comes from, how it's made, let's go into tasting it, which is not the best bit, but a fun bit. So here we have the Reserve Chardonnay from 2018. Um, what makes this a reserve? So there's two versions, right? There's a Chardonnay 2018, then there's the reserve. The Chardonnay elicits a lot of fresh, young Chardonnay qualities like um, grapefruit and melon. The reserve is slightly more edgy because where the grapes that make this vintage come from sit on a layer of limestone. Remember how I said limestone is good for winemaking? This is why it's important. Um, so limestone how do I say this? Just think back to like, I don't know, from one geography. Limestone is very good at like con controlling water, like it'll pass through and it can hold water. And in vineyards, especially in countries where there's drought, that's very important because it means, first of all, they spend less on irrigation, um, which I know this vineyard spends a lot on, especially, like I said, it's a very dry area of Australia. So having good, pretty much having good soil makes their life easier and this, it makes a very big difference in what the wine tastes like. So, yep, it's award winning, it's gotten heaps of points at various wine competitions and I'm very excited to try it. Just want to see? So yeah, I'm sorry I can't pour this closer to the camera so you can see, but when you come to Kayan Club just ask about it. And I'm sure the F&B department will be very happy to share this with you. Um, so yeah, so when you look at it, it's like pale lemony green. And there's some little effervescence coming through the glass, but then it just disappears really quickly. Um, there's not much alcohol. So fun fact, when you twist alcohol or wine in a glass, you're not really measuring how good it is, it's just really how much alcohol content there is in that glass. So as you twist it, you can see like some like remains, I don't know what the word is, coming down. It's not that much. If it was a lot, it would be, if, sorry, if there was heaps of alcohol in it, they'd be like thicker legs is what we call them. And that just signifies that the wine has a lot of alcohol in it. Um, the first thing you can tell about this wine is that it's definitely being oaked because you get a lot of like cinnamon and like cashew nuts on the nose. It's very refreshing. I would like to have something that smells this nice after a game. Um, it's comforting. It's like if you win, if you didn't win this time, this is like a warm hug on a sunny day that will just make you feel happy and really just refresh you after a game. Yeah, so on top of like the, the oatiness, there's like cooked fruit, there's some melon, some sweet, some grapefruit, and also some like citrus, like lemon skill and tangerine on the nose. So let's try it. That's so nice. I didn't. Wow. It's like acid, but sweet. Um, it's like. I feel all the saliva coming back to my mouth after having a sip, but also it's like a velvety feel in my mouth. It's what gets you first is like citrus. It's like really refreshing. It doesn't smell what it tastes like, which is also another reason why I love wine. But also it's, um, it's tangy. It's, I would have this on its own 
like you said, maybe after playing golf or tennis. Um, I, you can pair this with food, but I would recommend if you're gonna have the reserve, just have it as it is. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. And yeah, this is really, really good wine. You're gonna have some water. And cleanse my palate and just going forward if you're ever at a wine tasting and you feel like your nose is overwhelmed by all the different things they'll ask you to smell or to do and you feel like your nose is tired just a very neutral thing that I learned in school is if you smell that this part of your hand because this is the mo most neutral smelling part of your body it like it's like factory reset so if you're to smell eight different Chardonnays, if you get to the fourth one, you're just over it, right? So if you sniff there, it's really just factory research and that allows you to experience the other four wines as they're meant to be. All right, so let's get into the double barrel Shiraz. So first things first, I will pour it to the, in the glass to decant because this is just, it's like moody and exciting. So I want to be prepared and I look at it and be like, I'm ready to drink you now. Look at that color, looks so nice. Great, so what makes this bottle incredible to you as a consumer is it's two things. First of all, Shiraz is a baby of Australia, but this is what they're known for. This is what the Barossa is known for. This is what thrives in that environment. Shiraz is a little bit moody. It doesn't like heat that much, but given the climate and the terroir in Barossa, it just does incredible in that, in that environment. So this specific one, what Jacob's Creek and Pernod Ricard chose to do is, because Shiraz is a very full-bodied wine, and that means that when you have a sip, it can just take all the saliva out of your mouth because of the tannins, they double-aged it. So the first aging they did in American oak barrels, and then they took that wine and put it into old Scotch whiskey barrels, just to smoothen it out, just to add new textures and sort of ex elicit all the amazing qualities of, of a Shiraz without um, that overwhelming, overpowering feel from its tannins. So you can see the bottle is very moody. Um, I don't know if that really means that the wine will be very moody, but what this packaging tells me is that this will be a very elegant and very smooth wine. So let's get into it. It's an amazing um, ruby red color. It smells like cinnamon and pepper and like you know when you go to like to get like furnished, like to get your wood sanded. I don't know what that word is, but it smells like that. But also, it's very like earthy. It's very. It smells like someone put a lot of thought into this, which sounds maybe a little bit elitist, but um, from my experience, if I was to go out and purchase a bottle that smells like this, I know for a fact I will be very um, pleased by what it feels like, what it tastes like. Um, yeah, it smells moody, <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm. Hmm. It's... Shiraz is very, like, dry. But this is not. This is very smooth. It's like velvety. Um, on the mouth, it, the tannins aren't heavy on this. So if I was to blind taste this, really truly, I would think this is like a mellow that's been aged. Just because the Shiraz I know, and probably you know, when you have a sip, you know exactly what it is, since the tannins and the texture just like hits you in the face. But this is almost sweet at the end. It's like caramel. It's like. Um, like um, dark fruits, it's like chocolate cake, it's like, it's not at all um, intimidating as Shiraz's are, but this one is more warm and velvety and very smooth, so I would have this with food, maybe, I know Karen Country Club makes duck, I would have this with duck, and perhaps also like roast leg of lamb. Um, when they have perhaps the Sunday barbecue, this would go very well. And this is a, a Shiraz I think everyone would enjoy because it's not going to overwhelm you as someone who's new to Shiraz, but also if you're used to Shiraz, it will not underwhelm you as well. And yeah, of these two wines, I couldn't pick which one I like the best because they reflect Australia's wine culture and wine history so well in that they're very 
like old style grapes, Shiraz and Chardonnay, but they're made in such an innovative and exciting way that the textures and the qualities of the fruits really come through the bottle. But it's different. It's sort of familiar, but different. And yeah, when next time at Country Club, please ask for either of these two and let me know how you think and what you think about them. All right, so I hope you had fun and you learned about Australian wine history with me. I had a lot of fun and I maybe got too passionate and, and, di and digressed at some point. Uh, if you'd like to find this wine, Sky and Country Club is open from 8 till 7.30 p.m. all day. You can have it take away from the bar. Just speak to anyone and they'll give, it, they'll give you a bottle with a very big smile on their face. Do let us know, do let FNB department think about the wines. We are always looking forward to listening to the reviews from members. And thank you so much for listening to me and I'll see you here same time, same place next week. Cheers. Oh, Carol, that was amazing. Thank you for taking us through the journey of the Australian wines. We've really learned quite a bit and I'm sure our audience as well, we've learned something about Australian wines. What great knowledge she has brought to us today. Engage us on our social media platforms using the hashtag Karen Wine Hour. Give us your comments, questions, and even suggestions. Um, stay tuned for our next episode. See you same time, same place. Asante Nisana and Carol, thank you so much. Thank you.